And I believe we should be live. Let's just double check here on our uh, check your uh, notification. Make sure that we're live on the back check here in my end. Yep, we're live. We are, we are live. Awesome. All right, let's let's get the show on the road. All right, good afternoon, everybody. Mighty Smart Guy Matt Sapali here. Hailing to you for the Money Smart Movement Team headquarters here in Oak Brook, Illinois. If you don't know me, that is my fault. I've done a much better job, in my, in my opinion, the last what, six or six, seven months um, of branding and being regular on these podcasts. So if you don't know me yet, my name is Matt Tapala. I'm the co-owner and executive vice president of PHP Agency, and I run the Money Smart Movement Team from coast to coast. And speaking of coast to coast, even though I may be here in the Midwest, in the Chicagoland area, represented on this podcast, represented on this live stream, are people from the East Coast, right? And so uh, I'm excited to see this uh, happening. BB, Sarah just joined us. Uh, BB, good to have you with us. Uh, great to have you on this podcast. And by the way, I've got some great stuff here uh, for the show. Um, I, I've ordered some books. John Calipari's one, uh, his three books. Uh, one, uh, uh, which one is this? The uh, Refuse to Lose. This is his mantra when he started at UMass. And then um, his uh, other book here, uh, uh, it's actually still in a plastic package. This is uh, Bounce Back from John Calipari. And this is the most recent book, uh, Success is the Only Option. And the reason I'm sharing you these books is because in about, what is it, guys, about uh, six days? Six days, we will actually, all of us will be in Las Vegas at the Caesars Palace for a PHP. PHP agency annual convention. Uh, we're going to rock the house here. We got Wayne Gretzky as a guest speaker, uh, and John Calipari is one of the guest speakers too as well. Uh, I just saw his show, um, One and Not Done. His show, his documentary, uh, won me over really quickly. And uh, nothing against the great one. And Wayne Gretzky, what's he doing? By the way, we have a hockey jersey coming on in. Uh, but uh, Veronica, thanks for joining us. What up in the field of AJ? Nice to have you too as well. But for those of you that share this video, for those of you that share this video, if you're watching this replay right now, we won't, we won't pick a winner until 24 hours. But if you share this video, I'm gonna make sure that when we sit down with John Calipari, I'll have him autograph one of these books. You let me know which book you want when we contact you, but we're gonna pick a winner. We're gonna get a book autographed just for you guys as a thank you for watching the show and sharing our message of not only financial hope, but a financial action to help America fix the financial problems that they have right now, especially in the areas of income. So joining me on this show is Brittany Palaez, uh, the only lady on the show. Uh, <laughs> it's very yeah. awesome. She's hailing to us from Miami, Florida, a former New York Life agent, uh, and now with us at PHP agency, running her own operation, running her own office in my jammy. So Brittany Palaez, welcome to the show. Welcome. Thank you for having us on. Absolutely. Appreciate it. Also on the show is my man, uh, Jeffrey Godet, a former mortgage uh, professional turned insurance professional, also with us at PHP Agency. Now running his own operation officially, well, actually unofficially, <laughs> wait for a couple licenses to go through. But he, but listen, uh, he's an entrepreneur. He's uh, he's got an office in, in, in uh, how do you say that? Woburn. Was it? Dep depends on where you're from. We say Woburn, and Woburn. it's spelled W-O-B-U-R-N, so it's most definitely Woburn. Yeah, that's right. Woburn. Uh -huh. So if you're here to pack the car, to drink some beer, hang out at Harvey Yard, my man Jeff Gaudet is here from Boston. Nobody really talks like that here. <laughs> <laughs> awesome, Jeff. Well, Boston strong. So we got Boston in the house, uh, and we also have Miami in the house. So, uh, I'm excited to have you guys on the show. Thank you for joining me this afternoon. Thank you for having us. I'm excited to be here. Absolutely. So wh why are they on the show, guys? Uh, let, let me share with you uh, why they're on the show. Uh, the reason why on the show, let me share a couple things. The, the, the topic of the show is the evolution of the insurance industry. Uh, why is there an evolution of the insurance in industry? Well, because uh, I've been in industry, uh, uh, Brittany, uh, uh, having a conversation with me earlier, she called me a viejo, because uh, I've been in, in, in this industry now since 1999. <laughs> 
And uh, it's going to be going on 18, going on 18 years. Is that right? Going on 18, so old I can't even remember. But it's going on 18 years uh, in this industry. And um, we've seen a lot of changes in this industry. Uh, Brittany Pillai is going to bring some, some value to the show because she comes from the career side of the industry. Uh, Jeff Agadez is going to bring a lot of value on the show because he not only comes from the mortgage background, but he transitioned as an ind- into the independent agency. So Brittany Pillai is a captive, a former captive agent. Jeff Gaudet was a solo independent uh, agent. So why PHP agency? Well, we're going to give you a story about what's, what's going on in our industry. So let's, let's take a look at this. So uh, let me see if I can share my screen here. Share my screen. This is new technology that we're using. Application window only. Yes, and share. I don't know if you guys see it. You guys see that? One, two, three should be shared in a minute. Share my screen, application, this one, and share. I'm coming up. No? Well, uh, actually, here we go. I'm going to switch my screen out. Well, I'm going to go. We can see it, but I can't hear you if you're talking. Okay. Well, it looks like it looks like I can't uh, share my slides. Uh, by the way, we are using new software, which this time the problem we saw from last week to this week is now we can actually hear <laughs> everybody no problem. Um, <laughs> next, the next future podcast. By the way, I just want you guys to know as well, uh, wanting to do your own podcasts. And wanting to do your own, uh, I was just talk, talking to my daughters last night about being, uh, you, being YouTubers, right? By the way, uh, here in the studio, come here, sweetheart. I want you to say hi to everybody. It's, it's uh, da- daddy, daddy, a daughter, birthday. So it's, it's my daughter here. Say hi, my line. Hi, how you doing, sweetheart? Okay. I know you're so fired up watching daddy at work, right? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Super. <laughs> And of course, we got Brandon Ballard here in the studio. He's auditing the show. Uh, but the conversation we're having constantly is uh, conversation with real estate professionals, with mortgage professionals, aspiring entrepreneurs looking for an industry to get involved in business, right? And so, uh, in our conversation on a weekly basis, it happens not only here in Oak Brook, not only happens in Miami, happens in Boston, happens in the other uh, 41 offices, 42 offices we have in addition to ours across the country with inside PHP agency. Why are people looking at the insurance industry? Why is it becoming sexy? Um, it's becoming sexy because um, Jeff Godet's part of it. Well, yeah, naturally. <laughs> sexy because because uh, Brittany Pillai is, is part of it, right? It's Miami, baby. Miami, the land of distraction. <laughs> and my wife definitely is part of it, and uh, that's why it's sexy. And it's, 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 it's coming into an era where back in the day, in 1970, there used to be 500,000 agents in our industry. And according to LIMRA, which is a research association that is, that's part of our industry, uh, Life Insurance Market Research Association, Lim, according to LIMRA studies, today's agents in the field force is less than 149,000. And it's not like it's getting any better e- easier, uh, either. Um, MetLife last year just sold off all their, all their agents to Mass Mutual. So there are no longer any more met, uh, met life agents. They just said, you know what? We just want to be great uh, producers of content, uh, great producers of products. Uh, we want to do that, and um, and they want to they want to be happy selling products to through uh, independent uh, life insurance agents like Brittany, like Jeff. And so, why, why is there a lot of attraction to it? So, uh, let's start with you, Brittany. What, uh, what got you involved? What was your start in the insurance industry? So I actually, I mean, I, I was in, I was working at Citibank and I realized that the bank, you can't really, you're really capped at what you can make and you, but you know, the guys that were in sales with their licenses were making multiple six figure, seven figure incomes. And so I said, man, I want to get my license. Um, but I, I wasn't sure where to go or how to do it. Um, and one of the clients at the bank said, you know what, my, one of my good friends is at New York Life. Why don't you, you know give him a call and I said okay so when he said you have to get your life insurance license and all that stuff I said insurance I'm like I don't want to know insurance I want to know the market I want to get into stocks and all that stuff and he says listen you know the first thing you got to master is the basics of the plan which is the 215 you know insurance license we'll we'll train you we'll give you everything 
And so I started there, you know, really, I didn't know what else was out there. You know, you're kind of just blind and you're like, all right, I'll, I'll follow it. And so I um, ended up getting all my licenses and I, I built my career at New York Life. There you was, go. Yeah. Gotcha. And how long were you at New York Life? Years. One more time, Brittany? About six years. Six years at Brittany. Okay. Gotcha. Yeah. So there, uh, the, the career agency is getting is getting um, disrupted. Major, major reason why it's being disrupted because the major life insurance um, companies out there, like MetLife, like Prudential, Mass Mutual, um, Northwest, did I say already, already Northwestern Mutual? They used to have so many insurance agents working for them. Mm-hmm. And today, as a matter of fact, uh, I went down to uh, Kaplan University and they had um, the pre-licensing instructor for the life and health insurance license. And he's a former Prudential agent. And he said, yeah, back back in the 80s and 90s, man, at the height of Prudential, they were at 25,000, 30,000 strong, 30, strong uh, in terms of insurance agents there. And now Pru, what, less than maybe 3,000, maybe less than 4,000. Um, and so and, and on top of that, they're not attracting any of the younger uh, 20s and 30s and 40s into the industry because today the average age of an insurance agent in a marketplace today is a 60-year-old uh, male, 60-year-old Caucasian male. And so uh, the growth in the population of America is is the multicultural community. And uh, Jeff, Jeff why, don't you, why don't you talk about that real quick? Jeff, uh, uh, how did you get started in the industry, Jeff? Um, uh, and, and what are you seeing right now in the marketplace as your typical client? coming into Boston. Absolutely, Matt. I actually, it was funny because I was in the mortgage industry for so long. And um, I think I treated a lot of my clients. I asked all the, all the questions. I think that a lot of typical advisors ask, and I used to get questions. Are you, uh, are you an advisor? Are you a financial advisor? And one of the uh, gentlemen who ultimately became one of my mentors in the insurance industry said, you need to go get yourself a license. And of course, being from the mortgage industry at the time where every year it just got better and better and better. I said, you're crazy. This is going to, I'm going to be here in the mortgage business the rest of my life. Um, and then uh, 2007, 2008 hit. Uh, I did actually get my license and uh, I made my transition into full time independent uh, insurance advisor role. Um, you know, since then, I mean, uh, I kind of, I guess, followed the same path a lot of people did. I got into, you know, what are the marketing systems? How can I go out and meet people? And, uh, you know, bought a, bought a lot of steak dinners for a lot of 50 to 70 year old people <laughs> and uh, realized that that is not the way uh, that is just not not an industry I'm interested in being in. So I, when I found PHP through you, um, really kind of changed the way I look at the business. And uh, I found that, you know, a, a referral based marketing system is much is much more uh, advantageous way to spend my time. So today we're, we're helping people from from millennials who are just, you know, either in school, getting out of school, looking to transition into an amazing industry. We're helping them do that. Uh, our people who are in there, you know, in our generation, which Matt, I, I think you call us the sexiest generation alive. I don't know why I agree with you. That is correct. Anybody yeah. between 1967 and 1985, yeah. or if you're considered Generation X, it's yeah. the sexy, not just the sexy generation, sexiest generation in the history of humankind. Right. <laughs> That's right. That's right. It's in Matthew somewhere. That, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, so it's well. What's unique about our generation right now is, though, I I've got a son who's actually coming up. He's college age, so yeah. we're dealing with that. And at the same time, I've got my mother who's nearing retirement. Um. So I think I'm nervous on both sides of the spectrum, right? So I can speak to a lot of people who are Gen X and say, you know, you've got children who are coming up. You're nervous about college costs. You're nervous about. Uh, the changes in the dynamic of careers today yep. and uh, parents who are nearing or are entering retirement. And obviously, whether or not they're scared, they just may not know the realities of what's coming. Yep. So I guess we're we're more frightened for them. So to be able to go out and educate people, that's really what my focus is right now to be able to do that. And, you know, back to the industry, the insurance industry is peeling back. It's it's reeling back. Mm-hmm. Uh, State Farm. Uh, their agents are out of the uh, they're out of the personal financial space in terms of uh, teaching people about retirement planning. Um, I think in uh, I'm looking at this article right now. I know you guys can't see it, but I'm looking at this article right now uh, from Cranes Cranes uh, Business Mag- uh, uh, Cranes Magazine. Um, uh, I can't see the date, but earlier last year, they're getting it says why State Farm agents are getting out of the investment game. 
Uh, they're getting out of there, helping with, with, with personal finance, with retirement planning, with education funding. I mean, helping our kids not go to, to college loaded and jacked with student loan debt. Uh, another article here, um, uh, um, December 2014, efforts continue to Bank of Americanize Merrill brokers. No compensation for small accounts. So a small account, according to, to uh, Merrill Lynch and Bank of America, which, of course, Bank of America acquired Merrill Lynch, during, which was crazy during the financial crisis. I never thought that Merrill Lynch would be acquired. They're the ones doing the acquiring. Right. Uh, the next thing you know, during the financial crisis, they get acquired by Bank of America. And so a small account at Bank of America slash uh, Merrill, uh, Merrill Lynch is that anything that's less than $250,000 is a small account. So I uh, just, had, just had a guy, Joe Rosario, he's a, he's a, he's a former uh, Chase private client specialist turned realtor and now turned insurance professional working together with us. We're mentoring him at PHP agency. But he says, listen, to, co to come to the bank, uh, and, and Brittany, uh, chime into this. I know you worked at the bank. But to come into the bank, to, to go behind the glass doors to talk to the private client specialist, you know, you need to have a $250,000 liquid account and a $2 million net worth. Um, is, that, that, is that just hocus pocus, Brittany? Or, no. or is there any validity to that? No, all, all banks have minimum requirements. Merrill Lynch is quarter mill as well. Um, and it's just it's just a very aggressive, salesy environment where every quarter the quotas of what you have to do. I just got off the phone with a guy that was had all his Series Six, Sixty Three, Seven with Chase, and he let everything go because it's every quarter that quota is going up, and you're just having to sell more stuff, and it, it forces you to do icky icky business sometimes, unfortunately. So when, when we're talking about you know how is the insurance industry adapting? How is the financial world adapting to helping and serving people? Um, it's evolving. Well, the, one of the evolutions, I wish I could show you this picture. I'll put it in the comment section after the show. But one of the pictures I'll show, I, I wish I could show you guys is this. Let me see if I can uh, have you guys see this. You might not hear me for a second, but uh, let me know. Oh, the kiosks. So correct, it's kiosks. So MetLife, Attempted to put kiosks to sell inside Walmart. Inside Walmart. And, and what? I would think about rollback, not purchasing life insurance at, at Walmart. And, and next thing what happened? That, that was an implosion. That was a mistake. And what happened to MetLife later? Somebody, some, you know, heads were rolled for that mistake. And, um, and MetLife is no longer employing career agents. Now, Brittany, can you, can, you, can you give us a little bit more insight into what a career agent is? Because a lot of people don't think about insurance as actually having an opportunity to build a business like you are now. But, but what's the difference between a practice, somebody running a practice, uh, running a, a production model versus somebody actually building a business like you are? Yeah. So when, when you first get started in the industry, if you just get recruited to a New York life or, you know, someone called you and you were recruited, you really don't have your eyes are really like this. You have no idea the spectrum in terms of what can possibly happen, what you can do, um, the scalability of this business that that you can you can you can make. I mean, it could be as big as you want it. And so, when you're recruited as a career agent, it's more of a an employee mindset. They sell you on a very small dream of being a producer, maybe getting to six figures, quarter mill. Oh, we'll take care of your benefits for the first few years. So they kind of make it sound very nice and fluffy. Uh, and you're like, great, you know, it sounds awesome. You know, I'm going to have support. I have these people at the office that are going to do our paperwork. And they get a little a little bump. You know, it's called a TAS, TAS contracts for, for most companies. And New York Life are very similar where the first three years you're getting, you know, off of every sale, you get an extra 30% commission on your first year, an extra 20% second year, an extra 10% the first year. So the first three years... You think it's like amazing and you think the same work ethic is going to make you the same amount of money and it's not because your commissions are now dropped to 50% after year four. So you're like, wait a second, I'm, I'm doing the same amount of business and I'm not making the same amount of money. Yeah. Bonuses because they made it sound nice and sweet in the beginning. So that's, that's a part of it. They don't teach you the work ethic or the mental toughness or the business skills that it really takes to run a practice because you're just being taught the, the technical, production skill, you know, the skill set of, of, of how the products work, 
Yeah. Um, so they teach you how to speak Chinese, basically. And then when you sit with clients, they don't understand your language, yeah. you know, and they tell you to get all these licenses, all these certifications. And every certification basically is another wedge between you and the average person you're sitting with. Um, and so they, they've just taken, there's just a big wedge between the financial industry and the people because people and salesy. Um, and then you, you you get your license and you, you pretty much fend for yourself because you put a, uh, you know, top 200 list together and you go sell and sell your friends and families, which, you know, if you just got your license, who's going to buy from you? <laughs> you just, you know, especially I, when you're young, I was 22 years old. Who's going to buy insurance from me? So they, they still today still tell their agents to go call canvassing, which is knocking on doors all day. You know, who, who, who does that anymore? Like it's so old school. I can't, you know, it hasn't, so, worked, it hasn't worked for years. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And so I, I was able to stay afloat cause I didn't have a mortgage back then. Uh, and I lived with my dad and I was 22, but most people don't, don't survive through that. Yeah. Um, and then finally, when you realize that there's much more out there, now you're four or five, six years in the business. You're like, shoot, I wish I would have owned my own book five years ago. <laughs> I'm going to go back to that idea. Break. Jeff, I want to chime in with you on this. Can you grab the green envelope underneath the whale? Um, Jeff, what's it like as an independent agent in a traditional financial marketing work, in a traditional financial marketing organization looking to build, is it building, what's the talk in the industry? Is it building a practice? Or is it building a business? Because there's obviously two different definitions. Because a practice, let me make, make sure the listeners know, a practice is something that you have to be there. It's like a lawyer having to be in court all the time. It's like a doctor having to be at his uh, medical office all the time treating patients, right? So the independent insurance industry, so you can get a direct contract with an insurance company, but then what? Okay, I got an insurance license. I got a contract with all these different insurance companies. I mean, I'd be captive like Brittany was at New York Life, where we have one company, one silo, one one business card with New York Life on it. But Jeff Goddard, you were independent. What's that life life like being an independent agent? Uh, on on face value, on paper, it seems pretty exciting initially, when you see companies offering you these amazing contracts based on the fact that you produced the year before. Yeah. Um, I guess the, the tough part about it is once you start to realize, kind of like Brittany realized inside of captive agreements, uh, it's not what it's spelled out to be because realistically, especially if you're trying to grow your quote unquote practice and you start recruiting agents who are looking to get involved in the industry with you, um, those independent marketing companies that you're working through to get your contracts are very happy to recruit your agents right out from underneath you. Um, you know, so you're basically uh, you're basically a training step for them to offer the same contract you have to the people that you brought in and trained while trying to maintain a relationship with you. It's kind of an amazing thing, actually. So uh, not not a whole lot of help out in the industry either. I was just talking to some of the new people this morning in the office and I said, you know, all we're really doing for you guys is shrinking down your time frame to get from brand new agent to successful in making money. Because realistically, it took me several years to start to understand all the product that was available. Yeah. You, know, you go out and see people. You want to help everybody with everything um, rather than being a specialist and being able to understand one product really well, which I believe what we do. Um, so so it's, not what, it's not what it looks like out there. It's a, it's a, what, do they, what do they say? It's a jungle out there? Jungle. Yeah. That's the truth. And everybody's trying to be an alpha male. Uh, by the way, if you guys haven't noticed, uh, there's a lot of people commenting on this uh, video, which I really appreciate. I think Sierra Shirai just dropped a comment. Uh, Bohemia Garcia just dropped a comment. Wendy Cadet, Nina Bass Knight, of course, dropped a comment. Nanyu Barbosa, Sal Via, Via Toro. So I just want to give you guys a quick shout out. Bianca Potts, thank you guys for commenting. And you can see your comments come up on the screen. So this is part of the new unique feature we have with this software that we didn't have before. So I like this because it interacts with you guys. You guys are, we're doing this show for you guys and to have you guys interact with the show, it's awesome. Um, but yeah, Jeff, it's, it's um, you, know, you know what, by the way, you know what I have here, bro? Uh, uh, this, is, this is the journey of an independent agent uh, <laughs> because the independent agent needs leads. That's right. But you need leads. I mean, even a career agent working at New York Life, the bank, uh, Northwestern, you need leads. Well, this is how the leads are, are created uh, in, in the industry today. It's called direct mail. And this is direct mail that I've received at my residence, my home. 
and and um, this is a this is a breakfast seminar um, at at, um, at the Marriott. Uh, they're willing. This is to to, to know what to do with, with uh, real estate income options and, and financial planning. If I'm a real estate uh, owner and investor, uh, this is how to increase my financial education. This is from an independent agent. Oh, uh, check this out. This is how I can understand my Social Security benefit options. Okay. Um, does it look like I am close to getting my Social Security anytime soon? I mean, I'm, I'm 43, not 63. And, um, I, I got this uh, this guy's on, on TV. He's, he's, he's inviting me to uh, Gato's um, restaurant. And guess what he wants to do? He wants to feed me. Hey, there it is. There it is. That's it. <laughs> Um, this this guy wants to uh, uh, teach me about options. They want to hold it at the local community college. Uh, this guy wants to teach me uh, about my retirement planning. Okay, uh, and he wants to hold it at the local high school. Classroom instruction for adults. Um, this guy wants to teach me about again social security. Right, and this and this the guy this is the advisor this is the advisor that's uh, uh, hosting this, this radio show um, and hosting this uh, again. What, what do they feed me? A lot of stake in that industry. <laughs> I need one invitation. I got I got two invitations, right? And I got another uh, 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 another uh, invitation to help me understand my different retirement strategies with the Roth IRA. Guess what, guess what they're feeding me? You're making me hungry, man. <laughs> uh, right? So so this costs money. This costs money. So if you're looking to get in business. This is what you got to do in the independent world. Yeah. In, in a financial, you got to put money inside direct mail. Hundreds and thousands of dollars could be spent doing this stuff. And Jeff, when you're doing direct mail for seminars, what was the guarantee that a client's going to say, Jeff, do business with me. I want to be your client. What was the guarantee of that? Oh, there's no guarantee. No guarantee. No, there's no guarantee. You're, you're literally in a position where you're spending anywhere from three to five thousand plus dollars per event. And of course, you're up front speaking very confidently, and then you you walk behind, uh, you know, uh, into the back where the bathrooms are, and you you feel like you could you couldn't possibly eat steak right now because you're sick to your stomach, hoping that there's at least one person out there where you're going to be able to get some sort of return on investment on the money you spent. Exactly. That's exactly it. And by the way, bad marketing on their end because what they pulled a bad list. Yeah. A bad list because I'm getting. Social Security, retirement options, and I'm in my 40s. What is a guy in his 40s worrying about? I'm worried about taking care of my kids. I'm right. worried about getting out of, making sure I'm out of, I'm, of course, I'm debt free, but because I'm an entrepreneur, I'm sharing with PhD agent, of course, right? There's, there's no debt on our end. I'm not, by the way, I'm not saying that I'm just not being sarcastic. There's no debt on our end because part of being an entrepreneur in the financial world, I learned how to be an entrepreneur, how to create cash flow. And number two, I learned how to better manage my finances. Part of side benefits of our, of our entrepreneur group here called PHP agency. And when I'm thinking about being an independent, Jeff, think about back to being an independent. Did they teach you how to manage your, I mean, you're in the financial world. Did they ever break down a class? Jeff, this is how you manage your finances as an as, as a independent contractor, as a independent agent. No, they, they told us this is how you sell uh, this particular product. That's it. Brittany, uh, how about your end? Same thing. Most of them are just as broke as the people that they're that they're that they're helping, and if they're making a uh, six-figure income, they're they're you know they're spending it and they're going out and they think it's like well, I'm going to play golf and pay for everything for, with these buddies, but they're not capitalizing on that right. at all. And so at the end of the day, it's they're they're not. We're, we're teaching people not not just the agents. I mean, not just the clients, but when the agents come on board, it's like hey, you know, don't don't overspend just because you're you're making some money or. You know, you're you you made a ten thousand, twenty thousand, thirty thousand dollar month. Let's let's put some in savings. Let's pay off your debt. Let's get let's get you going so that you're not an entrepreneur that's you know stuck. We, we've got to set that example uh, for entrepreneurs and and for people in the financial industry. Uh, Jeff, how much money were you spending in direct mail, steak dinners, at a venue per, on a monthly basis? What, what's an e what's an easy amount of money to spend to market and brand yourself using tr traditional, outdated marketing methods? Uh, that these guys continue to teach you, uh, uh, formally, of course, in the in the traditional insurance world. Happily, formally, of course, uh, anywhere from five to seven, eight thousand dollars a month, depending on how many events you had going on that particular month. And what contract level were you at? 
I had a national marketing contract with companies like Fidelity and Guarantee Life. So I was making 120% plus bonus. So you had a high commission contract, okay? Mm -hmm. uh, Brittany, what about you? What, what was the traditional investment that you guys were expected to spend at a captive agency uh, firm like New York Life? Um, well, they, they, again, they sell you on, since you're not, you know, they, they don't, they don't ask you to spend for marketing and stuff. They have everything, you know, little cubicles that you can use all their marketing stuff, all their marketing, you know, um, yeah. pamphlets and stuff, but you still got to send it out. You still got to market yourself. They, they tell you about the dinners and doing all that. Um, but where they get you is the commission. So you're, you're at a 50% commission for the rest of your career. So they're really taking that, the rest of it, you know, they're staying with that override. Yeah, I get it. And by the way, I just want you guys to know, if you are a, a, a working at a captive agency, this by no way is a bash on your company. So this is a bash. This is really talking about the, the lack of opportunity for growth, both in the career side and on the independent side of the insurance industry. Let, let, me, let me share a few more points. Um, the insurance industry, the, uh, the average age, Brittany, you're in the industry in the career side. You walk into a room, it's a financial planning conference, it's an insurance agent conference. How many other women are in that conference as agents? Oh my God, back then, I wouldn't even, first of all, I wouldn't wear colors. Now I like wear bold lipstick and I have colors. Back then it was like black, gray, navy blue suits. It was super, you know, I, didn't, I couldn't even sneeze wrong. <laughs> you couldn't really, you're, you're in a box of what you're supposed to like you know, be like, and it's very intimidating, very stiffy, and just, you know, you kind of can't really be yourself there. <laughs> and they're typically older and, and male, you know. This older male dominated world for you. 100%. Uh, Jeff, what about you on the independent side of things? Well, I'm definitely not wearing uh, brighter lipstick these days, but. <laughs> <laughs> Give it a shot. You should. Yeah. Could be a good look. Who knows? I think it will. Could be a good look. Um, hot pink, hot pink works. Yeah, yeah. We have, uh, we have a new market that uh, it's opening up for you, bro. It's becoming a uh, many so give it a shot. This thing's good. This, this live, this live uh, tele, uh, broadcast went just just took a left turn. <laughs> um, as far as you know, I, I what I like about here, I, I like the fact that people can be themselves. I like culture, you know, and I like the fact that. Uh, you walk into into a money smart office, uh, left coast or or the right coast, and uh, you know you see people with suits on and rocking Air Jordans. You know what I mean? I like culture. I mean, because you know what we're promoting is entrepreneurship. Yep. And uh, last time I checked, most of the wealthiest business owner entrepreneurs I know don't wear suits. Right. Look at uh, Zuckerberg, John. Right. 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 Um. So, so in an article here in April of 2016 on Diversity Inclusion Institute is that the insurance industry can boost diversity through recruiting. One way for organizations to become more diverse and inclusive is by hiring diverse talent. The insurance industry, however, has had a mixed record in recruiting diversity, observers say. It says here, it says here that insurance has never been an industry that was highly active in recruiting people out of college or enhancing its reputation with the next generation or doing the things that other industries have done with their workforces, quote, Corbett Doyle of Vanderbilt University. Uh, how, how, what, what opinion we got to have to that point? Has the traditional industry, whether captive or independent, have they done a good job of recruiting diversity and younger talent? No, at all. And even if they do, you can't retain them because it's like, it's just, it's so boring. I just saw uh, a gentleman on Facebook. It said something with New York Life. And I said, I know all the people on New York Life on my Facebook. So I click, I'm like, hey, you know, were you at New York Life? He's like, no, I was, you know, in, in another company before. I'm like, why would you go from from us to, to, to back to New York Life? I mean, that's crazy. He's like, you know, you're right. It's been super boring. I just, it just, you can't, you can't retain people. And you can't connect with the average person either. They tell you that you have to have all these certifications and like a whole alphabet on your last name. And you got to be perfect and you have to drive the best cars and be that stiffy. Yeah, there's an aspect to our business that you need to be professional because you're talking about money. But you don't have to stick in this square box. And when you're sitting with the average person, they appreciate your individuality and they appreciate that you're just like you're talking real to them. Yep. You know? Absolutely. Jeff? 
uh, diversity uh, and um, diversity and uh, younger recruitment in the independent world. What have you experienced? Uh, I, I haven't really experienced a whole lot of diversity in the independent world. That's for sure. Um, I think within uh, within the if you walk into any given agency, captive agency today, uh, I don't I don't see a lot of diversity. I don't I don't see a lot of female. Um, and uh, I, I just don't think that they've really caught on. You know, this, this is what America looks like today. We need to be uh, having people who uh, everybody else feels comfortable working with people who look and sound like them. And I don't think the industry has done a great job of that. Um, I say, you know, it's one of the things that we do well here. I'm like, and the reality is that it's, it's being human, <laughs> right? People are like, what's the secret? Uh, we're being human. <laughs> Right. I don't, I don't I don't feel like we're, sh we're that's not the part where we're shaking up the world. But realistically, we're shaking up an entire industry because we're hiring regular people who may have never considered an industry like this before. And probably because it was boring. Right now you're bringing in people. I mean, you guys have such a diverse uh, crowd over in over in Chicago. I know Miami's an, an amazing group of people. Uh, Boston happens to be the best of the three offices. <laughs> I don't know about that. <laughs> but, but we got we have a, a tremendous amount of diversity and some and just some great people coming up and it, it's always surprising to see people come in and like, you know, I never would have I never would have a million years looked at this industry if somebody hadn't introduced me and told me how much fun you guys are having here during your trainings. And I love getting out in the field and seeing the look on my friend's face or my aunt's face or or whoever's face when you guys are connecting with them about how you help people. Yep. And uh, that's a blast. Yep. I never, I didn't experience that before. And I don't think that the traditional industry is able to capture that because of how closed minded they are to it. Here's another um, Life Health Pro. Life Health Pro wrote another article uh, uh, January 2011. Where have all the agents gone? Key bullet points of this article agent, aging agents retiring, younger agents not entering, more agents independent come from captive. New agents on their own too soon. Uh, Chad Nearing quote says here, we need to get back into a role focused on mentoring just as much as sales. We need to take some of these younger producers under our wing. Um, uh, an article here in uh, 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 2015 uh, says one in four insurance agents will be gone in 2018. Uh, balancing out the numbers means hiring three young younger producers for every producer currently employed, uh, geez, that, that's some shocking stats. I'll show these. Uh, I'll show these uh, slides here on the screen right now. So, how, how do you guys feel about what I just read there about these quotes? At the end of the day, all the companies have to recruit. It's it's basically if you if you think about it, it's their it's their lead generation strategy, which is like ours is the same thing. Um, everybody has to recruit volume of people, and when when a new, for example, with New York Life, and you come on board, you're giving them 200 names. Right, that that's their lead generation program because you sell some friends and family, and you leave New York Life the next day because, you know, they, they, they you either sink or swim. Basically, they kept those clients. You don't even get those residuals, so they they're going to recruit volume and um and and keep the clients that that stick based on what you came in and brought them. So they really don't care whether you stick it out or not. And obviously, it's it's not all the developmental managers, but if there's not a core incentive to help you develop not only your technical uh, product skills, which you do need, but if they don't develop your like your, your people skills, the personal development, I mean, our income to precede our personal growth, and there is absolutely no process of personal development there. Like if I would come in all zeros for the whole week, because I knocked on doors all day in 2008, which nobody bought anything. So if I would come to my developmental manager and say, hey, I have all zeros. They're like, well, why do you have all zeros? I don't know. I mean, like there was no like, hey, what are you what are your fears? What are your insecurities? Why don't you read this book? Why don't you watch this video? Uh, you, there was not that process of, you know, ripping off the layers of fears and insecurities that we have about being successful in the first place. And, and a lot of being successful is not product development. Yep. It's how do you see yourself? It's how do you see money? How do you see life? And so we focus on the rewiring of the person's mentality so that the, the, the results follow. Um, and, and most people need that development, especially middle class where we come from. Now, now Brittany, um, at, at, um, I, I want to stop using the word New York Life, but in the captive world that you were part of, 
uh, what was your highest income? Let's let's talk money. What, what was your highest income in that world? About forty five. Forty five grand. And and now you're six. You know you're a six figure. So yeah. did it pay off for you going to not only independent but being mentor, but but buying into mentorship because that's what we have here at PHB Agency with our amazing mentor Patrick Bet David, the host of the number one YouTube channel for entrepreneurs. Yes. By the way, we're a product of that because P Patrick isn't just talking about concepts that he's just thinking out of his head. He's talking about things that he's actually incorporating with us. Right. And, and, and so, Britt, uh, did that decision to go from captive to becoming business owner in the insurance industry, did it pay off for you? A thousand percent. And it, we haven't even we haven't even started. And the fact is, you know, it was scary because you're like, wait a second. And in the captive world, obviously, recruiting is like a bad word. Right. You know, you're, you're you know, any company that's recruiting. No, it's this Primerica that and because they don't understand the business side of it and they don't realize that no matter where you're at, there's a whole department that's recruiting. Yep. You're just not taking advantage of it. They're, they're keeping all the overrides. And right. you do recruit, you only get 10% override off of that person's first, whose first year is really that big. So really the company's keeping the most overrides. Here, you, you have your own business and you have a mentor that's constantly stretching your thinking. If I was still producing, without someone like like Patrick or you guys to stretch my thing in terms of, hey, you can make a million dollars. No matter how much product I know, I'm not gonna go after a million dollars if I don't see myself making it. <laughs> or I don't have someone pouring that that vision into me. And so in captive companies, they don't do that because they're okay with you making $100,000, $200,000 a year for the rest of your life. And quite frankly, Britt, you know, if somebody comes to you, and, and by the way, this is no knock on any company out there, but if a person comes to you already with an insurance license, with five or 10 years of experience. Let's, 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 let's be real here. Somebody comes to me with 10 years of experience, says, hey man, I'm knocking on your door. I wanna interview, I want, I want your mentorship, and uh, I'm an insurance agent, and, and I'm a $300,000 a year earner, I'm a $80,000 a year earner, and I got all these licenses, I got all these experience. They come to me and says, I want your mentorship, I want your part because I, I want access to all the companies that PHP agency offers, but I'm gonna do it my way. But based on the way I've, I've, I've known it for the last one year, five years, or 10 years, or 20 years, What's your initial reaction when you hear an agent, even though he's licensed, that wants to come knocking on the door of an entrepreneur door versus being a um, captive agent door? Don't ask me. Well, I mean, the first thing is, listen, I've been there. Do you, what, what do you want to do long term and how big do you want to build it? Because you could be making whatever income. First of all, what, what are they netting? Because they're spending money on marketing and payroll and everything else. So what's, what are you actually netting from what you're selling? Yep. Um, and second, how big? Because that's not a scalable model. Big are you thinking? Exactly. Huge. Right. You know, yeah. They, how many? How many agencies do you have? Probably just one. And you've been in business for ten years. I'm going to have two in less than two years. Like, what? What, what conversation are? We? It's it's really how big they want to build it and, and what they want to do going yep. forward. Because where they have it, they're stuck there. Yeah, we we tend to attract bigger thinkers that aren't yeah. late and aren't entitled. Uh, Jeff, what about yourself? It's been a journey. I, uh, it's funny because I, when, I, when you brought me on here, as you know, I fought the system for six months. I fought the system. I said, I like this. Breaking his brain up. <laughs> yeah, it's tough to do, but as soon as, I, as I, it started to really click for me, um, it was amazing. And, and it's funny because I talked to a lot of industry guys, you know, the, the industry guys, uh -huh. I sit down and they're like, wow, you know, really, I spend 85% of my time prospecting. You're explaining the way you guys do business. That's amazing. You should be going after a lot of industry people. And I said, you know what? They're the toughest because that was me. And I know how tough it was for me to change what's up here from a producer mentality to a business builder, right? To, to literally be able to take a step back for a second away from the business and say, Brittany's 100% correct. How much money did I net? Right. Because I don't I don't care how much money comes in. If you have to spend money on marketing and all sorts of overhead, how much money do you keep at the end of the day? And how scalable is your model? I remember in the insurance industry, I had some great years. I had multiple six figure years in the insurance industry. However, I could never do anything more than that. I was at my absolute maximum capacity. I couldn't possibly do more without adding an additional full time staff person, which was additional risk and additional overhead. 
So it was always sort of this, oh, there it is. That's as high as I can go. Do I bite the bullet and take on additional staff? And am I going to stay consistent at this level in order to afford that? So, so Jeff, even at 120% commission contract, sounds very expected, by the way. So you're telling me, what, what, what would you say was your net contract even at 120% contract? So if you had all these expensive overheads, staff, so if you did all the math, your 120% contract would be whittled down to what? Oh, 55, 60%. You're back to the captive agency. Right. You're, you're, you're like independent but captive by your own model. And, and only, by the way, only if you're doing really well is it that high. <laughs> 55, 60%, you're doing a lot of volume in order to keep that much. Yep, exactly. And so um, you know, I, I, I thought I have is to, to add to your point, why are we going after the industry, the current industry professionals right now? Well, number one, the average industry professional is 60 years old, about to retire in the next three, four, five years. There's right. no age bias to it. It's just, a, it's just, it's just the, the social movement of that age group entering retirement. And the problem we just shared here is that there's nobody in the marketplace recruiting, attracting younger, a younger generation to this industry. That's why the evolution of the insurance industry is so sexy for entrepreneurs. This is attracting younger, a younger demographic, especially in this era, the graduating college, uh, they have a, a, a student loan debt. The student loan debt, they got to get a job at least 100, 150,000 a year just to pay student loan debt and cost of living in the city that they live in. And good luck with that. Yeah. So hence the insurance industry, we can make a legitimate $100,000 a year, $200,000 a year, $300,000 a year. With what investment? 400 bucks? That's all state licenses. That's pretty much all state licenses. Right? And so we, the, the typical insurance industry, the typical financial firms are all about free agency. In other words, they want you to leave that company and go to their company. They want, to, they want you to go from Merrill Lynch to Morgan. They want you to go from New York Life to Northwestern Mutual. There's very little progression in saying, you know what, let's take brand new people that want to be entrepreneurs. Let's teach them this industry and let's give them a model with, uh, uh, with, with systematic predictability. And that's, and that's where we're at right now. So um, from, from a money standpoint, um, do you see the optimism in this model as an entrepreneur in the insurance industry now? Versus where you're at in terms of excitement, vision, tangible, uh, a tangible goals that you can legitimate, legitimate hit, or is it all just, all just a pipe dream? Are you talking to me or Brittany? Go on. I'll just go first. I'll go first. Uh, unless Brittany, unless you have something you'd like to say first. <laughs> <laughs> I realized I said that. I'm like, well, that sounded really bad. I apologize. I apologize. So uh, it's for me uh, the excitement is seeing the industry over and over again through the eyes of brand new people. You know, I remember seeing it for the first time and having it click. And I remember what that felt like and how excited I was that um, I wasn't gonna forever have to stress about finances. I was going to be able to be a leader in my community. I was going to be able to give people advice. So now when you see new people come in, they hear it for the first time, but you know when that light bulb goes on over, you can almost see it happen. And I can see the excitement in their eyes about what it is we're doing and the opportunity that's here at PHP for them, right? I don't know how many companies out there are truly offering what we have here. Uh, and, and to be able to see them get that excited and fired up. I mean, last night's training in my office. <sighs> oh, man. I just, I couldn't even, I literally was like, is this happening right now? I was, <laughs> I was fanning myself. I didn't. I didn't exactly know what to do. And uh, cause everybody was like, and, and the buzz in the room and then and the train, I'm like, okay guys, the, the training's over and they're all sitting there and no. it, 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 it didn't want it to end. No. It didn't want it to end. So it's really, it's a, really an amazing thing. So to answer your question, um, it's not all hype. It's, it's all real. Yeah. Yeah, because if you want to build a business, you need two major things. You need system and you need culture. And, and that's what we're bringing to the table. It's just not system and high contracts. Right. As you just mentioned, you were at 120% contract. By the way, I was at 120% contract uh, in my previous career as, an, as a licensed agent. Mm -hmm. But um, my wife is an agent today, and she's much more happier in this contract, even though it's a little less, because we're operating on spread, not in individual sales. And that's right. what the traditional insurance industry wants to say. I can do this, I can do that, I can do that, and I can be a higher commission. And your guys leave because they leave for like 5% more 
uh, somewhere else. So um, look, looks like Saul. Looks like Saul had a good comment here. <laughs> right? I would have already signed up again. Hey, by the way, um, you can always contribute 150 bucks. No problem, Saul. <laughs> there's, a lot of people, there's a lot of poor people that need some help. Uh, uh, Brittany, what about you? How can um, you see your vision now in terms of your monetary goals, your lifestyle goals, now as an entrepreneur in, in this formerly old, boring dinosaur industry that's now facing disruption because of you? Oh, man, I didn't think 100,000. I thought 100,000. This thing that was so far away. And, you know, because you would see these guys in the convention, they're like, man, 250 million dollar income. Like, it's so so far and now it's like no we're good yesterday <laughs> um and especially with with someone who's touching your vision like patrick does on our dream team call and with you guys it's like a million dollars is nothing and there's a there's a millionaire born every single year here we're in with with what's going on in the industry and, and the development that we have with our guys um no it, it's it's not this dream or something that you see and, and i tell my guys that all the time I'm like maybe Ownership or a million dollars sounds too fake or crazy for you. I understand because I used to be there too, but it's we're from that. You know, I mean, it's 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 not crazy when you're in an industry with crazy people doing doing crazy things. To it normally, if the outside looking in, it would be crazy for a company to completely ruin this industry, and we're doing it, and we're part of that that crazy leadership team with our crazy CEO Patrick Fitz David that. He doesn't care. Like, and he's not scared to go after these guys that have been in the industry hundreds of years because they're just not being flexible with the times. So why not give the newest guy the opportunity to create the most wealth as possible and set an example for them? So it's very, very clear to me. And it also keeps you in the game because when, when you're an independent or you're a captive agent and you make 100, 200, 300, you get pretty comfortable. It's very easy to get comfortable. Most people do. But when you have people there that, that you're leading and they're like, man, I want to get there. You can't take your foot off the pedal because what you what you did to get here, we've got to we've got to still show them the example. So last night, same thing with Jeff. I mean, we were here till two in the morning. People just here, you know, getting their CE, doing whatever they got to do. It's crazy and it's insane. And even my family's still like, "What the heck?" But it's fun. It, it keeps you on your toes. It's exciting. It's not work. It's we're building an empire. We're changing things, man. We're going to make history together, which is fun. And, and that's and that's the best part about our business. We're solving a problem. You know, we're, we're, yeah, the money is a great byproduct of this of this journey of entrepreneurship in the insurance industry. But we're solving a big problem. The big problem people are, are overlooking and underserved. We mentioned earlier in the show that the traditional financial services industry has departed, helping the middle class. They're overlooking and underserving them. I'll give you I'll give you an idea. Um, the, the, the gurus out there, the Susie Ormans and the Dave Ramsey, I'll say this. Yeah, I know it's live. And they'll say young people, young, single, no kids should never have life insurance. They should, need, they, should never, they, they should never have, excuse me guys, they should never have life insurance. Never, 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 never. And I always avoid extreme ideology. Never, 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 never. Because you don't live my life. How do you know what I never need? So anyway, um, Christian Ortiz in our office. And he told me hey, three weeks ago, I, I helped the client out. What, what happened? Make a long story short, this young single client he helped, this person I uh, was coming to our weekly meetings. The next day they, they weren't coming around. Come to find out they had four tumors in their lung. Four tumors in the lung. And so so life insurance industry, obviously, through you guys who are who are licensed, is evolved. By the way, I have my, all my policies right here, my own individual policies that I own in my office. Right, I've got uh, we got four or five life insurance policies. My 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 kids, uh, my daughters here have their own life insurance policies. So anyway, make a long story short, life insurance policy today isn't for dying anymore. It's for it's for living, surviving something that's major. Anyway, so he says so he filed a claim with the insurance company. Come to find out, it qualified for a claim. And this person was putting fifty bucks a month into an insurance policy. Fifty bucks, fifty bucks, one hundred fifty bucks, because they faced a terminal illness of these tumors. Uh, was it a terminal illness or, or a qualifying illness? She got thirty-six thousand dollars of her forty thousand dollars life insurance policy. He handed her a check, thirty-six grand. Christian Ortiz. Wow. And, and she's in a she's in a multicultural minority community on the south side of Chicago. You know this whole thing called Chirac. Like, 
Well, our age, our business is solving the problem of a multicultural community has been overlooked and underserved, and he hands her a check for thirty-six thousand dollars. She's not a, 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 a she's not dependent upon the government. She's not in social security life or disability. She's not in, in the island card on welfare with the state of Illinois. She's not a burden at a church asking for an offering to help out. She's not establishing a freaking GoFundMe account. She's able to not go to her job because she's got thirty-six grand to just heal, all because of an insurance insurance agent in our office. Is mentoring and coaching, helping somebody that somebody traditionally says they shouldn't be helped because they're young and single, they don't need insurance. They need a 401k. They, they need a Roth IRA. I'm sorry, but the last time I checked, 401ks and Roth IRAs after 150 bucks, don't give tax-free $36,000 checks to their account holders. And that's what Christian Ortiz did. And that, that's a problem that we're solving. And there's a lack of people uh, in our industry today that is doing just that. So um, let me let me wrap it up with this, guys. Um, what would you say is is a sexy thing for aspiring entrepreneurs to consider if you're going to go in business versus the hundred grand to start a subway, the million dollars to start a Chick Fil A or a uh, or McDonald's, or fifty grand to start a, a, a Jackson Hewitt or H and R Block office? Why the insurance industry, uh, Brittany? Let's start with you. Uh, scalability of the business, man, and, and the vision, obviously, not just insurance, but uh, the vision and leadership of the company. That That's what makes it sizzle. That's the exciting part is like, now we're changing people's lives. We're changing things. And you're not having to spend so much overhead and in inventory, like in, in traditional businesses where you have to buy and sell stuff or, or construction. Or I mean, right now, any type of business owner can sit in front of me and they cannot sell me on why I should go into their business. Because every other business has some type of overhead, some type of, you know, food, restaurants. I mean, if food goes bad, liability with daycares, uh, you name it. You know, retail, you got to worry about trends. So when you're when you're in an agency model like ours, that's completely flexible in terms of product sales. I mean, we offer with the times and there is no inventory. So scalability and and, and vision of, of the company that you're partnering with, I think, is is the most sexiest thing. It keeps it sizzling. I love it. Yeah, for sure. I'm what? signing back up again, Brittany. What? I'm signing back up again. <laughs> I'm in. I'm in. <laughs> Jeff, what about you, man? Well, what's the evolution of insurance that makes it sexy for a guy like you to be involved of 100% all in? I just think that uh, to be able to be part of an industry that's really educating people about what's going on, uh, namely, uh, what a lot of people don't know is, you know, about the, the functionality of life insurance. That's one thing, but they don't really know or understand what it is they already have, right? How many times have we heard, oh, I'm all set because I have life insurance at work, yeah. um, you know, or, well, I, I think, I think I'm all set because my, my mother bought me an insurance policy when I was eight. I think, I think it's, le it's, it's at least $10,000. So if anything happens to me, my family's all set. Right. I, and I, I, I love to ask people if they bump their head. But our, our industry today and our company specifically, you know, what excites me about it, what keeps me here is the vision of, of where we're going. Right. The leadership within this company is is unlike anything I've seen before, the mentorship and uh, the opportunity presented to us. But uh, just to be around a, a bunch of fun people making money and changing lives. I don't know that there's any much, anything else you can really sell. <laughs> yeah, and and, and uh, serving people in a very profound way because I, I think I think the problem with America is that they don't have the right type of insurance. Right. They don't have any. Right. Uh, close right. to half the people in America today, half the households in America today, don't have any insurance. That's a big market, and only less than one hundred forty nine thousand agents looking to fix that problem. Let me, let, me, let me wrap up the show by what Deloitte and Touche and Ernst and Young said. Uh, strategic priorities for the insurance industry outlook. Prepare for regulatory change. Number two, stay centered on the customer. Number three, reevaluate strategies for a changing marketplace. Number four, take digital transformation to the next level. Uh, and, and also uh, number six, closing the gap. Number five, cybersecurity, of course. Number six, closing the talent gap. 
2017 is a year to determine the critical workforce skills that insurers will need to drive the business forward. Quote, uh, crucially, insurance should develop a very clear human capital strategy that spells out the skills that will be absolutely critical to have in-house and the ones they can get from their partners. Here's what uh, Deloitte and Two said. Uh, uh, growth opportunities, new product services, and importantly, distribution channels and sales and marketing techniques are becoming essential to spur faster growth in an under-insured market. Listen, don't take our word for it. There's some also very, very smart people, Deloitte and Touche, Ernst & Young. Uh, from a technical standpoint, guys, uh, what would you say to what those two um, accounting firms have had to say? And I'll share this on my screen. From a technical standpoint, you said? I mean, basically, we're, we're, it's like what we just talked about. You know, they're, they're looking to increase distribution in different markets, um, especially because we have, we're, we're attracting and retaining the younger generation. We can also connect to the younger generation because anybody 30 years old, we're like parent deaf to anybody over 40 or over 50 sometimes. So it's a new markets, it's making it simple, it's making it fun so that we actually have an opportunity to get ahead. And, and we're changing, I mean, these old companies, it's like a Titanic in the middle of the ocean trying to, trying to ship. And here we are in a jet ski, kind of being flexible and being able to jump the waves and change and, you know. Um, so that's that's what we're bringing to the table. And it's, you know, it's already open for whoever uh, wants to take advantage of it, obviously. Yep, exactly. So I'm excited for our convention coming up. And by the way, if you haven't shared this, live stream already which is powered by be live uh anybody that shares this book i'm getting a book either autograph this book bounce back uh john calipari's success is the only option or his uh, uh other book which is um uh refuse to lose anybody that shares this video um uh, i'll give it 24 hours so i won't pick a winner right now but i'll give it 24 hours because i know there's some people that are going to watch this via replay but we're going to be seeing john calipari next week uh, and I will make sure that anybody that shares this show, I'm going to have our staff here pick it because they don't know the uh, our, our listeners and viewers like I do. So I don't want to be biased, but uh, they want to be very objective. But anybody that shares this, you'll get this book shipped to them uh, by me to your office, your house, which is going to be signed by John Calipari, who I think has a great story for our industry. Uh, his job is to change lives. His job is to say, you know what? I, uh, I know what I can do for me as a coach, but I know what I can do better for my players. And he's got, a, he's got, a, uh, he's got such a uh, – his one-and-done philosophy is I'm going to recruit you to Kentucky, but if you're good enough to play in the NBA, you're not coming back to college. You're going to the NBA. And a lot of people are saying, well, why are you doing that? You're, 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 uh, you're downplaying the value of a college education. And so what's the, what's the value of a college education? Is it to get, is it to get, job, to get a job? Because if it's about jobs, well, aren't I creating one of the best jobs in the world, which is playing professional basketball in the NBA? And I don't think Der uh, I think Derrick Rose has no problem with it. I don't think John Wall has any problem with it. Uh, I think two years ago, his starting five was drafted all in the first round. Never happened before in the history of the NBA. And so I love to hear from him because what we what you guys are doing as entrepreneurs, what PHP Agency is doing is show, showing and sharing a message of free enterprise and capitalism. At the end of the day, Brit is as powerful, answer this question for yes or no, as powerful as life insurance is, what changed your life? Life insurance or entrepreneurship? Entrepreneurship, baby, all the way. <laughs> God, that would change your life, understanding policies and policy construction and being at a 120% contract or being a 6% contract or understanding the value of entrepreneurship and free enterprise and capitalism. Uh, the latter half, Under, understanding entrepreneurship, hundred times over. Good. And see, that's what saved my life too. This guy, right here, recruited me in 1999 to the financial services industry. He recruited me to become uh, the step, to, to to take my first steps as a stepping stone in entrepreneurship. His name was Carlton Enloe, and I honor him to this day because I was a 23, 24 year old United States Marine, single dad, cussing my kid, not knowing what to do after the military. 
He recruited me into this industry. And the first thing he did is put me on a budget. And I was so fired up about being on a budget. And the second thing he did, he started, started having me put $150 a month into, at that time, which is a variable universal life policy, which I still have today. But he started having me put 150 bucks a month to this policy, uh, put me on a budget, and I wasn't fired up. Well, you know what fired me up? When he showed me how to create cash flow. When he showed me how to create income. When he showed me control. That's what changed my life. And you know what? If you're picking a very wealthy industry to be a part of, $63 trillion dollar industry in the insurance industry. It's only the richest industry in the world. The insurance industry only buys 60% of all corporate bonds in America today. It employs so many jobs. If you want to pick a great industry, pick that industry because well, uh, wealthy and at the same time old and dinosaur. It needs new blood, new energy, new perspective to change it and disrupt it. And that could be you today. That could be you watching this show live, replay, or listen to this podcast. That could be you today. And the great part about it, Brittany Pelias, what's, what, what's, the, what's the cost for you to get started in the insurance industry? For you to get enrolled and, and get your life, what's the cost? No, I mean, it's a few hundred bucks. <laughs> That's it, which is people's, huh? For a few thousand? No, it's a few hundred dollars, man. And, and people spend on, on a night of drinks, you know? So it's, it's just, huh? Especially in Miami. <laughs> yes. Well, in Miami, it's like a few thousand dollars for a weekend, but... <laughs> But I mean, people spend money all the time and if they just reallocate their priorities and, and put it in an industry that's going to make them 10, 20, 30,000 dollars of income each month, why not? Man? Why not just go for it? Because when you get to the point where you're, you're able to give your family these experiences, I mean, I just took my mom to Cancun and it was so special for me to say, mom, whatever you want this week, not just what's, what's all inclusive in the food and the drinks and the thank you to PHP to, at the hotel, but anything like what do you want to buy clothes excursion spas like everything is on me you know and just seeing her scarcity like you know like no why, why don't we do this one it's 150 instead of 300 or, or i'm only going to get the hour massage because i don't want the two hours it's like we're she's wired to just think fear it's, it's too much she's 65 years old she's never had an all-inclusive experience like that um, so it was very powerful for me, and I, I, I've never experienced giving that to someone, and it, it was my first time. And so I wouldn't have been able to do that, saving 500 bucks a month into an IRA. I mean, yep. you know, yep. um, so it's just getting started. I'm looking forward to doing that to the rest of my family and, and for my onboard kids. <laughs> Ooh. Yeah. Jeff, bro, you're making, you're making some money now, bro. How much money did it take to get started to get this business off the ground? A few thousand bucks, a few hundred thousand? Yeah, just just like Brittany said, it's a, it's a couple hundred dollars and a little bit of studying. 150 questions. Pass that test. Um, and by the way, uh, uh, Richard Love just dropped a comment here. Entrepreneurship in the right industry. Now, Richard Love is a 21 year uh, 21 year Army veteran, Afghanistan combat veteran. Um, earned the uh, earned the bronze earns a bronze star. You don't get that for just being a schlep uh, in the military, but uh, that's through bravery. And uh, his life changed because of entrepreneurship, not because of insurance, but because of entrepreneurship. And imagine if you can combine entrepreneurship in a very wealthy industry, maybe you put those two combined. And Richard Love right now, he, he's, he himself is speeding distance. I think he just got paid like seven grand this week. Uh, but he's speeding distance to uh, $100,000 income for himself. So I'm very proud of Richard Love out there, retired veteran, uh, retired uh, soldier, and now turned veteran entrepreneur. Uh, Nina Bastin had a pretty interesting comment here. I share with all my connects great information. Please do this again. Some people are confused and being preyed upon and manipulated by thirsty uneducated. So what behind it? Entrepreneurs penetrating, being their own boss. That's, 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 and Richard uh, said no 9K. <laughs> I'm not sure if Nina has any strong feelings about that, but outside of that, I appreciate the comment. Uh, you're absolutely right, Nina. That, that's happening today. And uh, you know what? The, the sad part about it, you know, you know, there, that's why the Bible has this uh, story called the prodigal son. There, there is forgiveness. There is forgiveness in this world. And, uh, you know, business, business is sometimes is unforgiving, but at the same time, too, the, the people that run businesses, they can be forgiving. So, um, so and I just wanted to, to mention, because I know there's probably people on here that are either looking at real estate now, right? Because it's entrepreneurship. I mean, everybody's riding Uber because they want to make extra income. And so everybody wants to be an entrepreneur. Everybody's getting the real estate license. Real estate, it's like six or 800 bucks to get that course. And 
it's like there is no support in there. It's kind of the same thing as being like an independent insurance agent. If anybody's you know looking to get into real estate or already in real estate, it's just it's just not the industry to start up now. We're, we we are that industry. Yeah. You know, for, for a fraction of the cost of what you would need to get the real estate licenses. Richard Love, oh, you want me he, he corrected me, he said he didn't make seven K this week. Nine K this week. He's making general pay. Proud of you, Richard Love. That being said, everybody, thank you for your comments. Thank you once again for tuning in. Remember, we're here every Wednesday afternoon, 1 p.m. Central Standard Time. And we got some awesome technology that we're working with, man. Love it. Thankfully, we pulled this off, this uh, multi-screen uh, interview. Uh, Brandon, what do you think about this, bro? This works? Yeah. Looks pretty good? Yeah. Awesome. Uh, so, uh, Jeff Gaudet, thank you very much. Thanks for your time, brother. I'll let you go back to running your business. Uh, Brenda Palaez, uh, same thing to you as well. Thank you for your time. Thank you for having us, Matt. We appreciate your leadership as well every single day. Well, praise the Lord. All right, guys. See you soon. See you next week, baby. Vegas next week. <laughs> Stay tuned. We have some amazing news on Friday, August 18th. This industry will be rocked by the announcement from our CEO, founder, Patrick and David, on Friday night. If you guys are in Vegas on Friday night, I think there's another company having a convention down the street, something with Bloomin or something like that. Anyway. Um, if you happen to be at that convention, you're just hanging out and you are so curious because there's so much buzz about our industry, hit us up on Facebook, private message me. We want to show you, listen, there's a reason why there's a billion people in China, a billion people in India, but they're all coming to America. You know why? Because America offers a better compensation plan. America offers a better opportunity. Not because we're bigger, but because we're just better in terms of compensation and better culture for the, the modern entrepreneur in this day and age. With that being said, guys, on behalf of Jeff Gaudet from Boston, Britt Palais Pal Pal from Miami, and yours truly here for the Money Smart Movement Team headquarters, thank you for joining the show, The Movement Podcast, and make sure this Friday you check out our next update, our next episode, episode 15 of Living Money Smart Vlog, a veteran entrepreneur vlog. With that being said, until we meet again, continue to live smart, continue to love smart, and be money smart. God bless you guys. Have a great week. Bye. See you in Vegas. <laughs>